good for the body, good for the soul. We'll take a look at the bounty both inside and out. I'm Alan Smith, welcome to the show. You know, it's hard to believe that spring is just around the corner because it's pretty chilly outside. But you know, recently I received some inspiration from some friends in California. Inspiration in the way of color with some of these gorgeous plants over here, as well as inspiration for my taste buds in the way of these gorgeous heads of butterhead lettuce. The way I see it is, well, I've got a feast for the eyes and a feast for the taste buds all putting me in the mood for a glorious spring. Seeing early color makes me daydream about what I plan to do in my garden. And it reminds me of a garden I visited back in the spring where I got to see a display of gardens in full vivid bloom and foliage. I'll take you there a little later in the show. And while we're in California, we'll meet up with the producers of Live Gourmet, a line of hydroponically grown lettuce that you've probably seen in the grocery store. This is a wonderful way to enjoy fresh lettuce while it's too cold to grow your own. But if you want to grow your own, I've got a few tips that will help you get a jump start on the season. So stick around for that. Now, I know it's hard to think about our lawns this time of year, but I guarantee you the folks at Pennington Seed and Lawn have it. They continue to try to come up with better and better blends of grass seed. We'll get to that a little later in the show. In fact, we'll visit with a lawn expert for tips on keeping your turf in tip-top shape plus the recipe for this mouth-watering temptation. It's all coming up right after the break. Okay, I admit it, I'm a lettuce junkie. I love it any way I can get it, and I do love to grow it. In fact, I'll grow it from seed when the season is right. These seed will germinate and produce lettuce, well, in 65 days for head lettuce. And when I can't grow it, I love to use this kind of lettuce, which is actually fully intact with its root system. You can see right here. Now that's fresh. You know, we had an opportunity to visit the Hollandia Live Gourmet Facility in Carpinteria, California, where Pete Overgag tells us about his family's unique farm. Since our greenhouses are all computer controlled, the conditions inside are, are close to perfect. So this translates to excellent quality vegetables because we give the plants exactly what they need, the amount of light, the right amount of humidity, water, the nutrients they need, and everything is, is very tightly controlled. Another quality control we have is, is a very um, high-tech uh, irrigation system. So the water is constantly being monitored for the correct levels of the nutrition and also the pH. And this water goes out to the plants just how they want it, and then we capture it and bring it back and, and filter it and sterilize it and water with it again. So all, all of our water is recycled. And since we're also controlling the environment, the temperature and humidity, we're able to create a nice environment for predatory insects to control the harmful insects instead of using pesticides. That's a pretty impressive facility, isn't it? Well, you don't have to have all those fancy mechanisms to grow fresh lettuce in your backyard. In fact, this time of year, I like to get some little lettuce plants started by picking some of my favorite seed varieties and then doing it in a number of different ways. One of them is to take these little plugs like this, which are pressed peat. You add water, just as I have here, and then within just a few minutes, these will expand and fill with water, and then you can plant the seed, just two or three little seed in each one of them, and in a matter of five to 10 days, they'll germinate. You've gotta make the plant feel like it's outside. So what I like to use is one of these warming mats, as you can see here. This just keeps the soil temperature raised just a bit, again, like it's spring. And the other is to put a little lid on your little greenhouse like this, which will help hold the humidity around the seedlings. 
and you want to put it in indirect light. In fact, I think having a grow light can really help, particularly if the days are still short. Now another way to grow lettuce is directly sow it into the garden. All you do is bury the seed about an eighth of an inch deep and you just space the seed about an inch apart and in no time they'll germinate and you'll have delicious lettuce to eat all spring long. It's just important to remember that lettuce needs full sun and you want to make sure the soil stays consistently moist. And remember, you don't have to have a garden to grow it. Lettuce grows beautifully in containers. We'll learn a little bit more about some of these beautiful plants that are a wonderful addition to the garden. And a little later, tough turf and a delicious recipe from the garden. See you after the break. Take a look at these beauties. Quite the pick-me-up on a cold winter's day, huh? Well, my friends at Euro America sent me these for just that purpose, to get me ready for spring, and I've potted them up here in my workshop. I've got some of my favorites, like this one called Opal Innocence Nemesia. Like I said, it's very fragrant. This one over here is called Catalina Linen. It's a type of terrenia or wishbone flower. And this one, well, this is Diamond Frost Euphorbia, one of my all-time favorites. Looks very delicate, believe me. It is a tough plant, but it likes it warm, so it's gonna be a while before I can take that out into the garden. Last spring, I had a chance to go out to Euro American in California, where I saw a burst of color you just can't believe. It was in their greenhouses as well as in their display gardens. Bertie Fountain tells us about some of the showstoppers they had there for everyone to see. My gosh, what gorgeous begonias. Aren't these stunning? Oh, these are beautiful. Heavens above, I haven't seen anything like it. From a distance, they look like fuchsias. They do, they do, but they're just stunning. They're actually new genetics, and they took a wild version of a begonia from Argentina that has a trailing habit, and they bred it, and we have these beauties to result from it. Will they flower this heavily through the entire growing season? They will flower like this as long as the days are long and it's hot and it's beautiful. This is the sort of begonia one would keep in a container and not put in the ground? Oh yeah, these are designed for hanging yeah, baskets. The habit so, would indicate that. Exactly. Yeah. What about light? You have them here in filtered uh, shade or sun, however you want to look at it, under these trees. Um, maybe morning sun, not too much How afternoon sun? I would say that, you know, you really have to look at what your area is like. And if you find that you've got really, really intense highlight levels, like in the south, then you may want to give it more shade. Yeah. But if you're finding that, you know, you've got high humidity and the light levels aren't that intense, then you could give it more sun. It's sort of, you'll know when it's too much and you'll know when, when it's not enough, they just won't bloom. As single specimens in hanging baskets like this are just spectacular. So, gosh, thank you for bringing these uh, to the forefront. I can't wait to give these a try. Oh, thank you for trying them. They're beautiful. From lush plantings to lush lawns, we're talking about turf up next. And a little later, a delicious recipe you don't want to miss. I just wish you could smell the sweet aroma of this Opal Innocence Nemesia. It's really fantastic. When you design gardens, there are multiple elements you want to consider. Fragrance is certainly one of them, color, and texture. And I have to say that by having a big, beautiful display of flowers juxtaposed a long expanse of green lawn, well, it doesn't get much better than that. Recently, I had an opportunity to visit with a lawn expert who gives us some tips on how to keep your lawn in tip-top shape. Denise, I have to say, things are really hopping around here. Yeah, this is our biggest time of year around here. Well, you know, seeing the seed going into bags and then walking out here, it's pretty amazing because you can see the finished results on one of these lawns yeah. you've created. Yeah, this is a, our special tall fescue perennial blend. It works really well out here and it came in really nice. We planted it this spring. So Denise, what would be the advantage to a blend of grass seed versus just one variety in a lawn? Well, one will come up a little bit faster and a little sooner and then the, another one will follow a couple days later a little broader leaf and help fill in that spot a little nicer and then the third one actually comes in just a little bit later after that and then it kind of fills in and makes a nice carpet. We have our um, the tall fescue is a little more drought tolerant so it'll stay nicer in the summer and and then the perennial has a nice fine blade to make it look soft along with the fine fescue. So to get a lawn this lush 
How much seed do you have to put down on the ground initially? Well, it's about uh, 10 to 8 pounds per 1,000 square foot. Oh, well, it's, it's not too much. No, it's not. And do you, do you, would you overseed each spring or each fall? Um, I don't, not necessarily, unless it's le you know, needing it, looking a little thin. And that's the only time I would. Is this the sort of thing anybody can do? Anybody can do this. I enjoy visiting gardens where you can really see the signature of the designer, and that's certainly the case of the garden home of Carol Mendel of Little Rock, Arkansas. Since my profession is an in interior design, it was really natural for me to come out into the yard and to do some design work and create some rooms in the yard. I wanted each room to be an adventure. I wanted, to, wanted it to pull you in and that you would find something new and exciting and maybe something just to tickle your fancy just a little bit. So I've had a lot of fun doing that. And the design background helped me just immensely with that aspect of the garden. What I really loved about this property is it had a barred view. And that is in the back, we have the Arkansas River and you can't ask for a better water feature than that. So I wanted to take different areas of the garden and let you see the river from a different angle. You know, every area that you stage in a garden is just like staging in a house, and you are looking towards a view. So every, every pause in the garden, there should be a bench. I use pots as ex exclamation marks. But I also, again, I wanted the yard to be an adventure. I wanted to play in the yard with my grandchildren. I wanted the neighborhood kids to come over. So I wanted to ramble in the yard. Kids today can't really go through neighborhoods like they used to. They can't wander on their own. So I wanted the kids in the neighborhood to feel free to come and wander through the garden and let this be their adventure. And it's worked out great. But I've tried to keep everything very simple, very interesting, very maintenance free. There's not a stick of grass in this yard. So there's nothing to mow, but there's a ton of weeding but I actually enjoy the weeding. Up next, comfort for your home. And a little later, this delicious fresh from the garden recipe. So stay with us. Being someone who likes to spend as much time outdoors as possible, sometimes I forget about the importance of the indoor, our indoor environment and the air quality. I was at the International Builders Show in Orlando, Florida not too long ago, and I caught up with someone who takes air quality very seriously. Bob Deisner of Lennox gave us some food for thought about heating and air. Well, some of the most important things to keep in mind when shopping for an air conditioning or heating system is to remember that it's not all about the efficiency of the system. It's about comfort, it's about the indoor air quality, it's about the air you breathe, and so many other factors. Linux has the most efficient units that you can buy, and they have indoor air qualities, uh, products that can, can meet just about any need that they have. So it's about more about your comfort needs than it is just the efficiency. Comfort and indoor air quality are probably one of the most important pieces of the puzzle in your home. Remember that when you live in your home, you're there 24-7. You use your comfort system way more than you use a car. We have a, the, the pure air purification system here that fits right into your air conditioning system that can filter the air. It can, it can help control odors in the air. So this product right here, the pure air, can meet a lot of needs in filtration and and in the comfort and the way you breathe the air. Now, if you'll recall, earlier in the show, we learned a few tips on growing lettuce in your backyard. Well, Chef Russ Rhodes of the Roving Stove Company shares with us a recipe that can put lettuce to use in a delicious way. I love spring and summer. The flowers are out and everything is fresh and new again, and that leads us to the food of summer, salads. And today we're doing an apple asiago salad that'll be a hit at your next summer picnic. Then we're gonna begin with the honey mustard vinaigrette. First off, we start out with two tablespoons of real maple syrup, and I like real maple syrup because it has a lighter flavor than imitation. 
two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, two tablespoons of the whole grain mustard. Now in your store, you're gonna have several flavors of this. You just pick the one that you like best. We're gonna mix that up a little bit to break up the mustard. And to this, we're gonna add the third cup of olive oil. And we wanna whisk this well because we want the olive oil to be well distributed throughout the vinaigrette. And finally, we're gonna add half a teaspoon of salt. And we'll whisk that one more time. All right, we're gonna set that aside while we build our salad. And we start out with six cups of our salad greens. And to make things simple and easy, you can buy bagged salad greens at your local store. And this makes it easy and saves time. We're now gonna add our Granny Smith apples. And another convenient idea with the, the green apples is that they can also already come pre-cut in a bag in your produce section of your local store. Again, this saves you time, allows you to take it to your picnic. From there, we're gonna add our pine nuts. Now, we have toasted these pine nuts for one big reason, it intensifies the flavor of the nut. And you do that by adding your pine nuts to a skillet over medium high heat and you toast them for about five minutes. Finally, we add our Asiago cheese and this cheese can be found in the specialty cheese section of your local grocery store. And now we are ready to add our vinaigrette. So we just make sure that the vinaigrette is all stirred up well. We're gonna take and drizzle this over the top. And after that, voila, your salad is ready. And this salad is a beautiful salad that can be made quickly and easy for your next summer picnic. Enjoy. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Now, anything that you want to recap on can be found on my website, pallensmith.com. It's all there right from the show. Now, just remember, spring is around the corner and you'll have beautiful flowers like these. So hang in there, gardeners. From the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile Oh, no, I can't help but smile